Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. We're here every Thursday at 4 p.m. Thank you, Think Tech, for giving us this time and space. I'm your co-host, Justine Espiritu. Maybe Matthew Johnson will join us in the second segment, who knows? But every week we like to bring on farmers as well as farm supporters, different individuals and organizations that are working to support our local farmers and contributing to building a vibrant local food supply and community in general through food. So today, I am super happy to have Summer Monakea, who is the education specialist with uh, Kokua Foundation, specifically in the Aina in Schools program. Yes. And so I'm really excited to have you on, Summer. You're doing a, a lot of great work and can kind of catch up, catch us up with um, how this program has been developing. And then you yourself have an interesting background with uh, the farming experience you've had and how that kind of reflects the farming experience of others we've had on the show and kind of new trends in that sense. So we're going to catch up on all of that. Great. <laughs> so let's start with um, Kokua Foundation, and if you can kind of give us the history of the program, um, yeah, and how it's kind of evolved. So let's okay. start with that. Great. Well, thanks for having me on yeah. the show. Um, Kokua Hawaii Foundation was founded in 2003 by Jack and Kim Johnson, um, and we have multiple programs in Kokua Hawaii Foundation. I'm part of Aina in Schools, which is our farm to school program. It was launched in 2006. And um, what we do is we aim to connect Keiki students, particularly to um, their local land and waters and food to create a healthier Hawaii, a healthier future in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. And how has that, what, how long have you been in this, in this mm -hmm. position? I think I started last October. So okay. uh, just only a little more than a year. Okay. So it seems pretty new, but um, I've been in a lot of schools and I've had lots of experience and really getting to know all of the people in the community, North Shore community, as well as the larger Hawaii community. So it's been a really good, really good program to be a part of. And the total number of schools in the in the Island Schools program mm -hmm. is 19 now? Yes. So this year we added three more schools, Keolu Elementary, Haleiwa Elementary, and Kamaile Academy out in Waianae. And um, so we're at 19 program schools. And then we have educators and other organizations that use our curriculum as well. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. I, I've had a conversation with someone before that you guys kind of have a, a limited capacity to do to be specifically under Kokua's um, kind of oversight, but you've been doing trainings where teachers can collect the material and basically carry out the programs in their schools, even if it's not directly under your supervision or, or, or training so much. So yes. do you have a number on how many schools outside of that 19 mm -hmm. are using your material to? Yeah, so this is our third or fourth year, I believe, doing educator trainings um, to include whoever wants to learn about the curriculum in garden, nutrition, and composting. And so far, we've trained over 300 educators wow. from over 200 different schools and organizations throughout Hawaii. So um, we do trainings on O'ahu, Maui, Hawaii Island, and Kauai, and we just flew over to California and Santa Barbara and did a training over there for some of their garden educators. Oh, so. wow. Is that the first time you guys have trained someone in another, a group in another state then? Yes. So it was really interesting because um, our program is called Aina in School, so uh -huh. Aina for land, all that feeds us, and we turned it into an acronym for um, actively integrating I know. nutrition and agriculture in the schools and so a lot of our curriculum is specific to Hawaii and of course it draws from all kinds of different other cultures but a lot of our vocabulary and our nutrition and our garden curriculum especially our Hawaiian garden curriculum is Hawaiian and mm -hmm. a lot of the values that we teach are, are um, Hawaiian values that are universal concepts and yeah. universal themes but so I was like oh no are they going to be able to understand me <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about but it was really good and um, they train educators and then their garden educators like us go out to different schools and teach in the garden. Well, and so mm -hmm. when when was the first time you guys did that? Um, well the first time for we went to California uh -huh. was this summer I believe. Oh, or was okay. that just in September? 
October. Same I think day. it was October. <laughs> was that last month or two months ago? Um, okay. But then the garden trainings for the educators started about four years ago. And then, um, but before that, our model is to train parents and community to be the volunteers that go into all the schools and teach. Yeah, I think that's an amazing part of the program as well. Well, one, it's mm -hmm. amazing that you have so many dedicated volunteers, mm -hmm. but that idea that it's parents and other people in the community that are willing, that are there to give their, their kids and the kids that they might know outside of school, yeah. but being the ones to transfer that knowledge and get to have those experiences together is, mm -hmm. is a great element to it. Yeah, I think it's very special. I mean, um, I come from an education background, so I went to school to be a teacher, and we always teach that your ohana, your parents, grandparents are your first educators. So, mm -hmm. But then our school system doesn't really reflect that, yeah. where um, parents and community aren't always involved in every single part of the school day. So it's really nice to include parents and community in our model and our our program runs on our volunteers and we train them and they come with their own bits of knowledge and their own place specific information about maybe their ahupua or their land area and, and they can share that and we even have some teams that are I, we call them aina teams that's like a grandparent so two grandparents a niece going into you know their grandchild's classroom and teach it so it's yeah it's really neat it's a cool model and we're so grateful for all of our our volunteers that come out and support and dedicate their time mm -hmm. and do you uh do you know the number of volunteers you have so every year it ranges but it's it's a big number about five to six hundred volunteers wow. support the program every year okay yeah yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. i'm curious of um other than number of volunteers what are some of the uh, for a program like this what kind of metrics do you mm -hmm. guys look at to compare year after year of uh, we're doing what our mission is mm -hmm. or we need to work harder what are the, the kind of metrics for a program like this so we definitely is? look at how many lessons are being taught um, how many volunteers come and go into the schools how many schools are coming to our trainings and people that are coming to our trainings but um, I think the greatest metrics and measures are just the individual stories that we get. And that can be from a parent who has just come to Hawaii and they want to be you know, involved in their child's education. So they come and we train them and they go into the classroom eight times a year to teach. And, and after to hear that their engagement with their child has increased or they've taken some of the knowledge and experience and lessons that we do in the classroom and in the garden and brought that home. Or now when they go grocery shopping, they say, oh, let's buy this tomato from Whole Farms because this farmer came to share with us about what they do. And yeah. so just those individual stories that they're really taking um, what we're teaching and the value of our aina and the importance of being connected and sharing um, our knowledge and our food and that connection, just to hear that um, these are long-term lessons. These are lifelong yeah. lessons that a keiki is learning from kindergarten to sixth grade that they're going to be able to implement in their own family when they get older, but, but the immediate impact that it has. Maybe they're growing more food in their gardens now. Maybe they never had a garden, and now they can grow plants out of pots or compost their food scraps or mm -hmm. eat a little closer to the source than they did a year before. So every little bit counts, and every change we, we celebrate. Yeah, and, it, and again, I think there's always the theory of, you know, you teach this at this age, mm -hmm. you know, before sixth grade, and it just becomes something that's that's normal. It's not about changing their behavior mm -hmm. later on. It's just that they grow up, and that's, that's their experience. And so you mentioned that sometimes farmers come in. Yeah. So if you can talk about a little bit of those random connections that the program makes. What are what are the farmers coming in and doing or, or different chefs? Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about some of those examples. Sure. So in our program, there's six different components, the nutrition education, garden learning, and composting, which is our actual curriculum. But then we have another com three other components, and one of them is um, agricultural literacy. And so that's when chefs and, and farmers and cultural practitioners come into the classroom and share their, their craft. 
Um, and so if that's the, the farmer coming in, um, so we have Holo Holo Farms, Holo Farms, they come and they bring, set up their produce and share with the students what they do and how they grow the food and where uh -huh. their food is sold in the markets or CSA boxes. Um, and then also we have chefs like Ed Kenny and Dave Caldera of town um, and chefs all over the island that will take a day out of their super busy schedule yeah. to come and cook with the kids. So I think the last visit we just had was Dave um, Caldero from town from came and um, he taught the fourth graders of Waikiki Elementary how to make um, luau. So the cooked taro leaves with just luau, freshly squeezed coconut milk, and I think it was just salt was the other ingredient. That sounds yeah. good. And then you also mentioned cultural practitioners. Mm -hmm. What's like an example of, of some of the things they would do with the students? Okay, so for example, kui kalo, or a demonstration where um, a kalo farmer or a kalo practitioner comes in and pounds poi, okay. pounds kalo to make poi for the students. And so I, before I was working with Koko Hawaii Foundation, they actually brought me in to just oh, do wow. these, okay. these demonstrations. And it's really neat because the kids are growing all of these foods so they're growing kalo or, or t taro all year long and so we're able to harvest some of that and i can share with them maybe a more traditional way of preparing it with um with the board the papaku ii and the stone the pohaku ku ii so okay. it's really neat yeah. yeah it's tons of fun to do that in the classroom okay and mm -hmm. then so specifically for your position mm -hmm. we have two minutes before the break but if you can give us a brief overview of what you specifically do as an mm -hmm. education specialist in like a typical day or even today for example or yesterday that kind of gives us an idea of, of your typical day. Typical day it's usually involves supporting one of our amazing docent teams or volunteer teams so um, today I was at YLI Elementary and we taught a ulu lesson so um, I brought my papa and pohaku and we pounded and made ulu poi Oh, poi amazing. out of the breadfruit because it's breadfruit season and they're learning about native canoe plants so um, I can be teaching or I can go and go to a farm and collect some plants to take to other schools um, go to Waimea Valley and they donate some plants to us that I'm able to share with with the rest of our schools or just those kinds of things and um, yeah. planning our educator trainings and yeah there's yeah. so, always so much to do. Yeah, and then are you yourself coordinating who you're going to have come in on what days? That, that falls under your responsibility to coordinate all that oh, and no. find people? We have a really amazing program manager for okay. Okay. schools, Kelly Perry, and she is the master coordinator of all of these things. And I guess I'm the lucky one that gets to just go like, in. I'll just do what you tell me to. <laughs> and have fun and work with the teams, know, and support them. But, cool. um, yeah. I would say more of the educator trainings, things I'm more so coordinating what school we're going to be at okay. and what farm field trip we're going to take and okay. things like that. Awesome. Well, we're going to take mm -hmm. a quick break and then I want to get more into your specific background. Great. Okay, Thanks, thanks. Justine. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for Likeable Science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kawilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your host today, Justine Espiritu. Today we have Summer Monakea from Kokua Foundation, the education specialist. So thank you, Summer, for kind of giving us that background mm -hmm. on the program and what you kind of do on your typical day, doing gardens and nutrition education and working with the students. And so I'm curious to know yours kind of 
first, before I get into your background, I wanted to ask again, um, in your position with Kokua, kind of trainings that they give you guys to kind of mm -hmm. further your education. And even though you have a, a really thorough background in what you're doing, I'm curious of what kind of things you've gotten to do. And so you mentioned going to California, you, you guys did a training there, mm -hmm. but you guys also got to check out some cool stuff as well. Yeah. So if you want to summarize that for us. So it's great um, working at Koko Hawaii Foundation. We are really big on professional development and building our capacity as an organization. So we go and attend conferences all over the place and just visit other sites that are doing similar work so that we can, of course, learn, but also share, you know, the amazing work that we're doing in Hawaii. So just this summer, we went to Berkeley, California and visited the Edible Schoolyard, which is a project under Alice Waters. Mm -hmm. And we got to go and visit their middle school and they have a one acre garden and it's beautiful and they also have a kitchen classroom so that was something i really took away is how do we incorporate even more cooking um yeah. than we we already do a lot of cooking in our lessons but how do you incorporate you know those values of sitting down as a family and as a community as as students and sharing a meal together and then what really how does that transform our communities and the way that we spend our time Mm -hmm. So that was a really neat one that, that I got to go and visit. Yeah, and so with, with the Alice Waters, mm -hmm. did they start the garden and then built a facility to support that further education part, or did they already have that facility? And I think it was, um, it was created as a partnership with their school, with the school, the Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School in that area. And um, I guess because that area, they're so rich in, in this kind of culture of mm -hmm. farm to table and, yeah. and local, eating local. It's something they really wanted to instill in their students in that area. And that, is that something kind of credited to Alice Waters that she kind of started that? Yeah, I so think that's, so. Yeah, that's yeah, cool and that you check out from the source. <laughs> yeah, and she's really inspired a whole bunch of people. And so it's really neat to connect with that energy and um, know that there's people all over the world doing good things in, yeah. in schools, in yeah. the context of a public school education, public and charter school educa education. On that note, I know mm -hmm. Kokua is an important part of the national farm to school mm -hmm. network. Have you gotten to travel to be a part of that, not only in, in the specific site space, but mm -hmm. on that conference level? of everyone coming together, of like hundreds of schools. Have you been able to attend that? Yeah, so earlier in the summer, we went to um, Wisconsin, to Madison, Madison oh, Wisconsin. Cool. And um, then we took a, a drive and went to a farm called Growing Power. Okay. The farmer there um, who started his name is Will Allen. And it's a... Uh, it, oh, have I you read, read the book. Oh, yeah. 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 So we got to go there and um, learn about, about what they're doing and urban gardening yeah. here in Hawaii we're so we're so blessed to have you know land and water and planting your food directly in the ground but to see to see the creativity and and seeing a need that needed to be met um, and so Will Allen and his team they started this urban garden and we got to go and there. And it started also with just like a farm stand on the side of the street, right? Yes. And it's it's cool to just, I remember reading the book and it's like, you know, they just start doing something mm -hmm. and it's amazing to see the progress of what that turns into. Yes. And so it's really inspiring to just like start something small mm -hmm. and you never know what that's going to develop into. Oh, you yeah. get to see all the cool stuff. Oh, <laughs> it's just so lucky. And, yeah. and I really take each of these experiences and try and enhance my own teaching practice outside and also share with, with the students. And it's it's amazing just planting one, one thing or having one idea and sharing that with people. It can really grow and change a whole community. You know, mm -hmm. so. And so I want to talk more about your, mm -hmm. your experience uh, farming and growing food before in this position. So mm -hmm. if you kind of want to talk about uh, that. Sure, so I didn't really grow up growing my own food other than our mango tree that, you know, my dad planted and my grandma had some, some other trees growing. But I didn't really grow up growing our own food and uh -huh. eating or composting or doing that. And so it wasn't until I was, I was, found myself living in Australia and I was teaching kindergarten, but these kindergarteners knew how to compost their own fruit and vegetable scraps. 
and I had no idea where they were taking these banana peels. <laughs> you know, they're taking it to the vermiculture, the vermicompo vermicomposting worm bin. And so with four and five year olds, I learned how to grow organic vegetables. And um, it wasn't soon after that that I, I got called back home. I basically, my na'au, or my, I don't know the English word for it, but my na'au was telling me that, why are you doing all of this good work in a place in that, that you know, you don't have the greatest influence on you to come home. And so basically I came home to teach to grow a healthy food for my family. Uh -huh. And um, and so how long ago was this that you came back? I think that was 2010. So okay. I came home, did my master's degree in, in education, um, moved on to my PhD, which I'm almost done now, we'll see. <laughs> um, all focused on this relationship of education, Aina, um, having a, a, good, a good lifestyle, healthy eating. And yeah, so it's been a journey, but um, Along the way, I got to work at some pretty special places like Kapapalo Io Kanewai in Punalu'u, um, a kalo farm or a taro farm attached to UH Manoa. And over there, I really got to learn a lot about the importance of the varieties of our remaining varieties of our taro and the connection that we have because of this plant, Haloa, um, connecting us to the elements and the whole of Hawaii. And I really got to learn about planting using the moon phases, when to plant, when not to plant. Like right now is a perfect time not to plant. You know, we're in <laughs> perfect time yeah, not to plant. <laughs> we're in that we're in that phase. So do other things like weed or take care of some other other things in your garden or you know, don't go into the ocean. It might be a little rough and look at our weather right now. So really trying to learn a little more about the way that our Hawaiian ancestors yeah. really worked in relationship to their place and their environment. And a lot of what they, they've done um, lives, well, everything they've done lives in the land still here and lives within us. And so that's something really neat that I, that I get to share with kindergarten through sixth graders and then the parents and the community and the educators that I train. Mm -hmm. And you yourself are still growing, you kind of said you have mm -hmm. kind of um, patches throughout the island and then yeah. you're sourcing that and bringing it into the schools. Mm -hmm. So you're really bringing them something to start that you started yourself. Yes. Yeah, so where I worked at um, Kanewai, the main message there um, left by the kupuna of the area, Uncle Harry Kunihi Mitchell and some other um, Hawaiian leaders uh, around the Hawaiian Renaissance time really set that place up to as a place to come and learn and whatever you learn you go and you take it with you and you teach others you know in the context of their own community and so growing kalo is one of those things that i learned over there and i've really been able to share different varieties with other schools so yeah. growing at our office growing kalo at home with my family so they can harvest the lao and make lao lao or just growing at our at our little place in manoa um, and then giving those those huli out the cuttings out for other people to to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and we have a visitor. <laughs> um, so, what's uh, one thing I want to ask mm -hmm. is? Um, so you said you kind of write the the curriculum. What's uh, some new, maybe not even curriculum related, but what's some new developments within mm -hmm. the Aina and Schools program? Yeah. So for curriculum. Um, we just implemented some mo'olalo. So Hawaiian mo'olalo is a continuum of talk and it's a, uh, they're stories, but they're lessons. And so we try to pair off in our fourth grade curriculum, some of the plants that we plant with a traditional Hawaiian story, um, with different figures in it, like kamupua'a, um, the pig god and, and, you know, some other some other elements in Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian tradition. So that was that's a really neat development in our curriculum, but more so just um, doing more educator trainings and trying to get these so that the teachers that come, they get credit for, you know, and they can move up in their professional development, mm -hmm. pay scale and things like that. Well, right, you, you mentioned that mm -hmm. there's something, taking your training, they get those these further education mm -hmm. or, or professional credits yeah that's pretty awesome <laughs> yeah just we don't want to waste anybody's time and you know yeah. and if you're coming to learn about how to teach from a garden or how to teach um, nutrition or composting like we want we want that to enter into the schools too but we also want to be 
we know we want to contribute to their own to their own development. Uh -huh. yeah. Was that something you guys had to pursue with the DOE to say, hey, mm -hmm. you should, they're learning this great stuff, you should give them credit? You guys kind of initiated that? Yeah, and this, this all happened even before I, before I um, started at Kokua, yeah. you know, and it's with partnerships with the Windward District, um, CTE District, and so we have these partnerships all over the place. And, and they're so beneficial and we're so grateful for everybody that comes on board and we can support and they can support us. And so um, that one on Oahu, uh, they already had going before I came and then now that I'm working, um, I'm trying to make sure that we can do it on other islands. Mm -hmm. So even our neighbor island, Kumu are teachers, that they can, they can get this as well. Mm -hmm. But then, And also speaking of, uh, partnerships where you can mm -hmm. support each other you have also or the kokua has been great with setting up the elementary schools as a csa drop point yeah so kind of continuing you have your education programs mm -hmm. but then also giving them the opportunity to continue that way of like well why don't we set this up as a csa mm -hmm. and families can purchase a bag of vegetables and pick it right up when they they pick up their kids and take yeah. that home so it's great that you guys are also facilitating that mm -hmm. so that's awesome yeah it's really neat and um that's one of our program components is getting more healthy food on campus through student farmers markets or csas and so any opportunity we we get to partner with farmers and um food producers then we'll, we'll take it and it really does help out um a family that's coming to pick up their their cakey, they can right. go home with their cakey and enough to make enough veggies to make dinner. That yeah, night. right. Yeah. It's all about if you want to make those mm -hmm. changes to your mm -hmm. diet or your shopping, it's making it convenient. Yeah, and yeah. so some of these CSA programs like Oahu Fresh and even Holo Holo Farms, they even donate a, a percentage of these CSA baskets directly to the school. Mm -hmm. Or and fundraisers. Fundraisers, yeah. yeah. And so it's a, a it's an actual fundraise pro, fundraising program. Yeah. And so that's so awesome that yeah. schools can raise money off of living a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. So we have five seconds left. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much for Yay, coming on. Thanks and for having story. me. It's been yeah. tons of fun. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you.